What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Weekend Zone. I'm Devin Howard. You can find me on Instagram as at Devin Howard. What's up, everybody? I'm Jackie Ray. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JRayTheFanatic. I love being able to say Twitter. It's been so long since I've been in Twitter jail. <laughs> I know. I know. You are on a really good, good behavior streak right now, Jackie. <laughs> Oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I'm proud of you too. I know it must be tough because there are a lot of idiots on the internet. As we know, we're going to be talking to some of them when we get into comment clapback today. But let's start off with honorable mentions here. We want to discuss Lou Williams. So Lou was traded to the Atlanta Hawks just before the NBA trade deadline, but he took a few days to actually report to the team. And on Tuesday, he explained why he needed to take some time before he joined his new teammates. Um, now we know that he considered retirement after he was traded. He was obviously blindsided by the news and he told reporters that he took some time because he wanted to make sure he was mentally ready for the move. He didn't want to go into um, a practice with his new team with negative energy, which I really respect. Lou said, quote, it took me a few days to get here because once I arrived, I wanted my energy to be positive. I didn't want the guys to look at me like I didn't want to be there. And he said it was nothing against the team, um, you know, or his teammates. He just needed some time to figure out what was best for him. He said, quote, but now that I'm here, I've been embraced. The guys, it seems like they want me here, so I'm ready to get back to work. I'm going to make this push and move forward. Um, I really respect Lou for having the, uh, you know, just the knowledge or, or the insight to be able to say, like, if I jump right into this new team after being kind of blindsided by this move, I'm probably going to have a sour energy and I'm not going to be doing enough to uplift or enlighten my teammates. So let me take a second, take a step back and really evaluate what the situation is. And I think that, um, I think that, you know, we should applaud him for that. Of course, there were people who think that, you know, he shouldn't have acted like that, that, you know, he's just being a drama queen. But what's your take on this, Jackie? I 100% agree with him. I have, this has been consistently my thing whenever I start a new job, especially if it's one thing when you're starting a new job and it's just you're leveling up in your career and the, you know, you're know you still kind of sad that you're leaving another team, but you, it's all love. It's another when there's any kind of negative energy, like for example, being traded and having to consider retirement. That's another thing. So whenever I change jobs, especially when it's a negative reason, I always give myself a week in between that job and the new job because I don't want to go into the new situation looking at it. And if somebody does anything remotely close to what I've seen before, I'm going, yep, see, here we go. It's the same thing. You don't want to, you want to be able to go into the situation, give everybody the benefit of the doubt, start completely fresh with eyes wide open, ready to receive. And I think Lou Williams understanding that and understanding that this is definitely his moment. If I'm considering retirement, obviously I'm not mentally ready dive in with this team I need to really kind of reevaluate and then go over there and so now that's probably why he's feeling received so much because if he'd have gone in there with all that negativity he'd have probably been like oh they're fake they're just trying to you know whatever but now he really can appreciate the situation and I think that that's commendable and I think people who don't understand that are choosing to not understand that because I think we've all been in that situation and it's just some of us have no choice so we don't really get that option to say I need to take a step back but he, I think he did the right thing for himself and the right thing for the Atlanta Hawks. So now he can go in there and really be productive. And that's the main, the main goal right now. Exactly. Get your mind right. And then you're going to be ready to actually get your head in the game. So we, we applaud it. We respect you. We will do what you got to do. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season goes with him as an Atlanta Hawk. Uh, let's yeah. jump into this Malik Beasley news. Okay. Because damn Malik Beasley, he has, oof. It's been like a wild, maybe five or six <laughs> months for him. Jeez. <laughs> um, so he destroyed his marriage. He left his kid high and dry, all for Larsa Pippen. Don't understand it, but that's a conversation for a different time. But now he's being ordered to actually pay some child support, which I think is great news. So Montana Yao, his ex-wife, was recently denied temporary spousal support by a Minnesota court. She requested $5,000 per month in spousal support um, from Malik Beasley and then $8,000 a month in temporary child support for their two-year-old son. That's an expensive baby, but 
you know what? If she can get the money, I guess go for it after what he did for her. Um, but they, so they denied both of those requests, but they did order Malik to pay $6,500 per month in a child support payment. So at least she's getting that. I'm happy to hear that. Um, that's definitely a, an improvement from the $800 a month that was reported he was paying her before. Uh, so Jackie, what is your take on all of this? Do you think that that's too much money for child support? Are you glad that Malik is having to pay this now? No, I think that's the right amount. I think that's all she should get. I, I've never been a fan, whether you're a famous athlete or not, I've never been a fan, fan of spousal support. I'm not going to pay you just because you married me and, and then for whatever reason it didn't work out, get a job. <laughs> so I've never been a fan of that. But in his specific case, I would be okay with her getting spousal abuse because this guy's a troll and he's just, what he did to her and that baby and the reasons why, and all for nothing on top of that, um, if we can punish him financially, I know some of y'all are gonna be like, that's so petty. It is, I'm owning that. <laughs> but he deserves some sort of repercussion for that. Cause normally I'd be like, no, no spousal. You are a fully functioning, fully capable, healthy adult, go get a job. But he should 100% pay that $6,000 a month for that baby. I know a lot of people think that's a lot of month, but depending on where you live in LA here, that's once you're talking about childcare and your apartment and things of that nature, that's not a huge chunk of money. But it's definitely mm -hmm. a, a chunk of money that she can live off of. And she deserves that, in my opinion, for what she's gone through. So that's that's she should get that for sure. I'm 100% I'm with that. Yeah, me too. 1000% with that. So glad that she's getting more than $800 a month. That was a whack to begin with. So this is definitely better. Montana, yeah, getting the money, taking care of their kid. And Malik and Larsa are already over, apparently. So I hope it was worth it, Malik. And on that it. note, it was not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> not at all. It seriously wasn't. Um, but this, I feel like we're getting into a little bit of trash talk right now with Malik Beasley. So I think this is a great segue to get into your segment, Jackie. <laughs> so take it away. Yeah. Let's get into this athlete trash talk because once again, I feel like this sun is always going to shine on me now. I am. Tampa Bay Tom. I'm a Tampa Bay Tom fan. I, it, it just is what it is now. And I love, normally I would have flashed back at him for this. If he was still with the Patriots, I would have flashed back at him for this. But he decided to troll fans from Atlanta. And I think that this is so dope. I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently um, Atlanta Falcons fans cannot get over the fact that <laughs> in, even though they were leading 28 to 3, they ended up losing that game. They can't let go of it. They can't take the blame for it. That being their whole fault. So they always get together on March 28th, apparently, to troll um, Tom Brady and uh, the New England Patriots. But Tom got a, a jump on the situation this year and he trolled them first. And he said, happy 328 and showed him and Edelman and everybody else celebrating um, their <laughs> win. Um, and I love that it's 328 because it's also it was 28-3 is how they lost. So I don't know is if they just flipped it. Is that what that is? I don't understand this whole thing, but I, I, I love it. It's great. I love that he got in on an opening to be the first one to start this troll on 328 because wouldn't it be, yeah, I guess you can't do it 28-3 because there's no 28th month, I guess. But, you know, yeah. I, I guess, I, I'm just like, why would you guys, why would you guys, really make this day 328 the day that you remember the day that you blew a 28 to 3 lead why would that be the day that you decide to troll the guy who beat you for this and shouts out to tom for being the guy to be like yep you know what before y'all even start let me get you first i <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Tom Brady is the ultimate Twitter troll, and I love it. It's like this side of him that's just kind of coming out more and more recently, and I like that he's just, I don't know, hes he has a good sense of humor. We have to give him that. Yes, and I don't think I knew that about him in New England. So, yeah. Tampa Bay Tom, I am your friend for life now. As long as you don't go back to New England, we are good now. Let's get into this next one because we actually talked about this a little bit on the Fumble Live. We talked about the foul that was not called um, in the UConn versus Baylor game, and it was a foul that could have really turned the tide. So LeBron was ob obviously watching that as well, um, and he was upset when Baylor basically didn't get that call because that call would have given them the opportunity to win the game. So he took to Twitter, as a lot of people did, and he said, come on, man, that was a foul, um, NCAAW. 
Baylor versus UConn, and then he did the face palm emoji. And I think we all agreed with that. We saw it over and over and over again. That was definitely a foul. Um, but uh, UConn's coach, uh, Gino Arumia, he said um, in a quote, he says, I probably doubt that in his career he's ever won a game and decided to give it back because he looked at it and went, mm, that was a foul. <laughs> I get your point, you know, that's 100% true. I think the reason why LeBron tweeted this though is because this is becoming the narrative that we're seeing over and over and over again. Either calls are being made by the officials that are turning the tides of the game or they're not being made by the officials that are also impacting the game. And I think most importantly, we just don't want the refs to have that kind of impact on the game. But I think Gino is right. You guys know I'm a LeBron fan, Gino is right. And, I'll, and this is why you should never as a team let your game come down to a free throw. There were some shots they missed earlier in that in that same series that they could have made that would have prevented all this. So I agree with LeBron. That was definitely a foul. But don't let it come down to a free throw shot and a foul. That's not what you should do. Do better, Baylor. Yeah. That's how you do <laughs> Jackie said it. Love it. Um, <laughs> I agree with you. You know, it when you do let the game boil down to that, you obviously are opening yourself up to more risks. Um, but it was a foul. Like that was it was just an obvious foul. Um, but yeah, let's wrap up athlete trash talk and let's get into comment clap bag, my favorite time of the week. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> There's some mean ones in there today, damn. And I just wanna know what happened to you guys as children, woo! Okay, <laughs> let's get into the first one. Um, okay, this whole video is a cheap shot to Sweet Lou. You guys need to back off a three-time NBA Sixth Man of the Year, Mr. Instant Offense, cut him some slack. Honestly, this one, this per I like can't believe how seriously this person took this video because it was about Magic City memes. Like right. the video was about chicken wings. So you're seriously going to sit there and tell us to back off? It was a joke. We love Lou. We are supportive of him. We're happy that he's close to Magic City. What the hell is this comment? I wish I knew what was going through this person's head. I think they just read the title read the and they were like, oh, they must be coming for Lou. So let me be mad. This is what happens, guys. You gotta actually watch the video so you know that some of your comments look silly, like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Very silly. Up there. <laughs> oh God, no cleavage. Bad day. Is that why you're here? Because <laughs> I, I just don't. <laughs> Sorry. I, don't know I know. I don't know what else to say. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Okay, next one. <laughs> Those people who don't know who Sue Bird is should be ashamed of themselves. You know what? I agree. I, this one is a good comment. I agree with you 100%. Jackie, do you have anything you want to add? No, I mean, and if you don't know her, Google is your friend. I keep telling you guys this. This is ridiculous. So that's a good comment. I'm giving that one. That was a good one. Let's get this next mm -hmm. one up there. Okay, so this is on the... No guys flirting and so girl um good looking dude flirts it's a wink um a girl is happy and uh, cute ugly dude flirts girl says harassment <laughs> we didn't say anything like that i i understand why they are saying this because even in the live we talked kind of about that like oh it was it was adorable and you know blah 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 blah, blah. and we did make light of it and i i get what they're saying because we if if I just don't see why we wouldn't make light of it in this situation. And I don't think Luca is extremely attractive. I don't think Bogdan is extremely attractive. So I don't think looks is what's going to make a girl say harassment. But I, I do get what people are saying is because these people are endeared to us. So we're like, oh, it's fine. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so one thing I will say is that um, when Luca did it, everybody did have the reaction of like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But when Bogdan did it, it was different because everyone's just like, oh, he needs to back off. Like, boo. You know, people are getting all upset right. about it. I didn't have that reaction. I was like, hey, if he wants to try pulling out the flirt card, go ahead. Let's see if it works. Um, but yeah, so I don't totally agree with this comment, but I understand where this person is coming from because the reactions were very different. Very different. Okay. Yep. Very different. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is the one I was excited about. Okay, Woo. 
This one says, <laughs> Devin, shut the F up. He obviously don't give a F about his hair. Your friends don't like you either cause them eyes big as F and your face is lopsided. Maybe you should take it off. Take off Wait, my take off face, off face. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the last time I checked, having big eyes was actually a good thing. And, um, you know, I'm proud of having these eyes. I get complimented all the time. So sorry you're so jealous. But also, um, I would really like to see how cute you are. The anonymous person behind the screen without an actual profile photo. Let's see how cute you are. I bet girls like me and Jackie wouldn't even look twice at you. So there's that. <laughs> Somebody has a clap about somebody's looks. I automatically assume you're about 350 pounds. You need Ayana fix my life, the biggest loser, and your mother to force you to move out. Every time somebody attacks your looks, that is how I see you. So maybe get at least your picture on the icon if you want to prove me wrong, my guy. <laughs> I, I have a lot of friends who are plastic surgeons too. So if you need a recommendation, I'm really happy to provide one because maybe they'd be able to help you out. Um, and on that note, let's wrap up Weekend Zone. We hope you guys have a great weekend. Oh. Um, we are gonna be back on Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for our live show. We hope you tune in, subscribe, leave a comment below, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to give a thumbs up, and we will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.